Hey guys, Matt Guzman here, back with another video, and today is going to be about how to get the Digital Technology Merit Badge. So, this is another one where it has like different requirements, but there's also sections like A, B, C, D, stuff like that. So I thought it was going to be short, because there's only 9 requirements, but there's like A, B, C for each requirement. So it's kind of like environmental science, which if you don't know that I actually made a video on how to get the Merit Badge, so that will be in the description. But it, they're essentially... Um, laid out the same where there's like this many requirements but there's so many like sub requirements for each requirement so you just got to make sure you know which requirements you're doing so you don't get lost because that happened to me I got kind of lost in which requirements I was trying to do so just make sure you, that you know which subdivision of requirements you're doing <laughs> uh, moving on to the first requirement um, for digital technology you can see there's a cyber chip because the first requirement says to show your counselor your current up-to-date cyber chip. And I think the thing about cyber chip is that they expire annually. So every year you need to redo it. And they, when you're doing it, you need to recharge it by completing the certain requirements based on your grade level. So the cyber chip, for each grade level that you're in, there's different requirements. And they're not really more difficult. It's just more in-depth and more detailed stuff that you have to understand about cybersecurity and stuff like that. So going on the Boy Scouts of America site, um, www.scouting.org, I want to find more information about the cyber chip, and this one sentence here really explains it. It says, to help families and volunteers keep youth safe while online, the Boy Scouts of America introduces the cyber chip. So essentially, it's to help youths understand the dangers about cyberbullying, cell phone use, texting, gaming, identity theft. The most I can describe it is essentially just bad things that will try to access private information they'll try to just literally shut down your computer just for the sake of shutting it down which makes no sense why would any, anyone would do that but it's out there so you just got to be careful when you're online and this teaches you um, some of the basic things depending on your grade level as i mentioned before there are different requirements for the different uh grades so grades one through three and it's going to be a little simpler so they can understand um, at their age but as it gets to let's say grades 9 through 12 like me uh, it's it's not harder it's just more in depth and more in detail of how you need to be careful so that's what the cyber chip is about just to make sure you understand the different things that can happen to you all online so that's what the cyber chip is for and once you get that you can have the first requirement done in digital technology okay requirement number two says to do the following so you need to do all of these sub requirements uh, a says to give a brief history of the changes in digital technology over time and discuss with your counselor how digital technology in your lifetime compares with your parents or other adults lifetime so i usually searching up like how technology from back then compares to technology now and I'm pretty sure all of you have learned that like in the 60s and 70s, an entire room of computers and stuff is less like computing power than your phone. So it's just weird to think like how much it's compacted over the years and how much more efficient it's been. Uh, 2B says to describe what kind of computers or devices you imagine might be available when you are an adult. I usually think of like Tony Stark and his little swipey things in the air where you can just like expand his i don't know it's kind of weird to explain but he has this little screens that just pop out of nowhere and you can just click it's kind of like a tablet in the air but there's nothing there so i usually think of that or you know like fully functioning in independent ais where they they can like literally walk and have their own feelings that'd be kind of cool but that's what i usually think of so three just says do the following again you need to do all of these uh a says to explain how text sound pictures and videos are digitized for storage and b describe the differences between lossy and lossless data compression and give examples where each might be used 3c says to describe two digital devices and how they are made more useful by programming d is discuss the similarities and differences between computers mobile devices and gaming consoles and lastly e says to explain what a computer network is and describe the network's purpose so that's it for three moving on to number four says to do the following again you need to do all of them a explain what a program and or software app is and how it is created b 
Name four software programs or mobile apps that you use or your family uses and explain how each one helps you. So just a couple of the ones I usually use. Uh, I usually use the clock app where I can set alarms for different things like telling me to wake up in the morning and stop sleeping in or taking, uh, just doing like certain chores like taking the trash out, stuff like that. Another app I use is the memo app because I have random thoughts a lot, so I just write them down on that. It's just <laughs> it's not really useful, but I use it a lot because I usually have random thoughts. So those are just a couple of things, but you don't need to use mobile apps. You could even use like uh, software programs too. So let's say Windows Movie Maker. I use Windows Movie Maker a lot because I need to edit my videos. And if I didn't have that program, I don't know what I'd use because honestly, I haven't been searching for another one for a while. So Windows Movie Maker is a big software program that I use, and it helps me because I can edit my videos. Uh, 4C, it says to describe what malware is and explain how to protect your digital devices and the information stored on them. So uh, just a simple explanation I can think of for this is like VPNs and stuff. Malware basically is like stuff trying to get into your computer, just like the bad things that people say that are online. That's what malware is essentially. That's just a simplified version. I know that's not the actual definition, but I use a VPN on my phone, so um, I don't get my, my phone hacked into because, yeah, VPNs, yay. And f uh, number five says to do the following again. <laughs> uh, a, describe how digital devices are connected to the internet. B. Using the internet, find ideas about how to conduct a troop court of honor or a campfire program. So with the troop court of honor and campfire program, you need to print the copies of the ideas from three different websites and share what you found with your counselor and explain how you use the search engine to find this information. So like how you would search it up, um, how would you determine which sites to use, stuff like that. And this back to number five that was just requirement B uh, requirement C says to use a web browser to connect to an HTTPS secure website it says to explain to your counselor how to tell if the site's security certificate can be trusted and what it means to use this kind of connection okay so let's say that I'm online I'm on the I'm on the World Wide Web and I want to search up the requirements for digital technology so for 5c the requirement says to use a web browser like Google, which I did, to connect to an HTTPS secure website. So up in the top left, you can say HTTPS and explain to your counselor whether the site's security certificate can be trusted and what it means to use this kind of connection. If you click on this, it says that your connection is secure. So it says your information, like passwords or credit card numbers, is private when it's sent to this site. So when you're logging on to different accounts and things, and it says it, it, it can save it in the browser. Well, when you go on a site, it can access those things. You want to make sure the site is secure. Well, it, it either won't access those things, or if it does access them, it's only to access it to save it, not to give, give it out to other people. Sometimes if a site is insecure, uh, not only does the website have all your information saved, it can also give it out to other people. And that's never good if like a lot of people know your personal information. So. Just make sure that when you're on websites, the connection is either secure or your information isn't being sent to sites where they can use it themselves. Six is to do three of the following. So now you only have to do three of these, which is good because there's like eight different things. So you can only use, uh, you, you only have to do three. So for each project you complete, copy the files to a backup device like a USB or something like that and share the finished projects with your counselor. So you can send it via email, uh, USB, just any way they can it can transfer from one device to another. So since there's eight options, I'm not going to list all eight. I'm just going to list some of the requirements that I did. I like the first one, A, using a spreadsheet and or a database program, develop a food budget for a patrol weekend campout, or create a troop roster that includes the name, rank, patrol, and number of each scout. And for the spreadsheet, you actually need to show the counselor that you can sort the roster by each of these categories by rank, patrol, and by name, alphabetically. And that was all requirement A. Requirement B, which is one of the other ones I did, using a word processor, write a draft letter to the parents of your troop scouts, inviting them to a troop event. Uh, a good one to use this for 
is back in requirement five where it says to plan a court of honor if you are actually planning a court of honor you can use this one or you can have a invitation to the court of honor to the scouts parents and the troop scouts to tell them about the court of honor that's coming up so that's just what i did for that uh, another one i did was requirement d using a presentation software program develop a report about a topic create at least five slides and with each one incorporating text in some kind of visual such as photograph or illustrations and obviously i did this one because the presentation software program powerpoint uh, develop a topic about or sorry develop a report about a topic i usually do merit badges and the five slides i definitely have more than five slides and um not all of them have text and photographs in each one but I try to make it so you have something to look at as you're doing it. Um, one that has a lot of photograph and text would be my first aid merit badge one or my cooking requirements video. Those ones will be in the description for you guys to look at if you don't if you haven't already. And the last one that I did, I know this isn't three, but I still got more done just because I wanted to. Uh, make a digital recording of your voice and transfer the file to a different device and have your counselor pay play back the recording. Once again, there are eight choices, so the other choices I did not mention will be in the description for you to look at the different options you have for requirement number six. That was a very long one, so get your thoughts collected, moving on to number seven. Do the following. You need to do all of them. Explain to your counselor each of these protections and why they exist. Copyright, patents, trademarks, and trade secrets. 7b says to explain when it is permissible to accept a free copy of a program from a friend. 7c, discuss an article or a news report about a legal case involving an intellectual property dispute. And that's it for seven, moving on to number eight. Only two more requirements left, and eight is one of the ones where you can choose. It says to do two of the following. So there's like multiple choices, so again, I'm only gonna show here the two that I did. If you want to know the other choices, those will be in the description, but 8a says to describe why, is it, why it is important to properly dispose of digital technology, and to list at least three dangerous chemicals that could be used to create digital devices or used inside a digital device. The other one I did was 8e, and that says to f find a battery recycling area near you and find out how it recycles batteries and share what you have learned with your counselor about the proper methods for recycling batteries. And that's it for 8. Moving on to the last one, 9, and there's actually a couple choices for this one too. Uh, the first one is the careers one, where it says to investigate three career opportunities that involve digital technology. Pick one and find the education, training, and experience required for this profession, and discuss with your counselor and explain why this profession might interest you. The other option would be to visit a business or an industrial facility that uses digital technology and describe four ways digital technology is being used there and share what you have learned with your counselor so i just did the career ones just because i didn't want to like find a business but if you do happen to find an industrial facility i think that'd be really nice to do like to go there and to find out how it works and stuff that'd be pretty interesting but once you get number nine done, that is the last requirement, and that's all the sub requirements too. So thank you for watching my video on how to get the digital technology merit badge. If you did enjoy, please like the video, turn on notifications on my channel, and look up for any other merit badge videos I have in the future, or videos in general, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!